Hey, what's up, Ken Peeps? I'm sure you're pretty swole by now on the buffing up we've been doing. In this vid, we're gonna design a buffer solution with a target pH and buffer capacity by selecting an appropriate conjugate acid base pair and estimating the concentrations needed to achieve the desired capacity. Three big things we're gonna do here. One, relate the pH of a buffer to the pKa in order to create a desired buffer. Two, relate the pH of a buffer to the ratio of acid to base to create a desired buffer. Three, relate the buffer capacity to the absolute concentrations of acid and base in the buffer. Okay, so recognize that if when you're trying to make your own buffer, there are some important things to keep in mind. Good or effective buffer is one that can neutralize equal amounts of strong acid and strong base. And so in order for that buffer system to be able to do that, it has to have equal concentrations of the weak acid and conjugate base in solution. This allows it to neutralize the addition of either strong acid or strong base and resist those changes in pH. So if I were to add some strong acid, there would be some base, there would be some conjugate base there to neutralize it. And if I were to add some strong base, there would be some weak acid there to neutralize it. If you only had weak acid, it wouldn't be able to neutralize strong acid if you only had weak base, it wouldn't be able to neutralize strong base. So you've gotta have equal amounts of both components. Next, recognize the more concentrated the weak acid and its conjugate base are, the more effective the buffer will be. Because that way you can add more and 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 more strong acid and strong base, and it'll be able to resist the change in pH because there's so much of weak acid and conjugate base in solution. So here we have a buffer system with fairly large concentrations of its components. I can add substantial amounts. Here's my addition of a strong acid and there's some conjugate base there to neutralize it. I can add more strong acid and there's a bunch of conjugate base there to neutralize it. Boom, however, the less concentrated your buffer system is, the less strong acid or strong base you could add before you overcome the buffer capacity. So two characteristics of an effective buffer. One, equal amounts of weak acid and conjugate base. And two, the more of that weak acid and conjugate base you have, the more it'll be able to buffer. The more strong acid and strong base it'll be able to neutralize. Okay, so if you're trying to prepare your own buffer with a specific pH, you need to keep in mind the following equation at all times. And that is the rearranged Ka expression that solved for the hydronium ion concentration. A good buffer is gonna have equal concentrations of weak acid to conjugate base. It's gonna have a one-to-one -one ratio. And if that ratio is one-to-one, -one, think about what's gonna happen to that equation. You've got the hydronium ion concentration equal to Ka times weak acid over conjugate base. If those concentrations are the same. Let's just say they're each one molar, or maybe they're each 0.1 molar, or each 0.01 molar, or each 0.5 molar. It doesn't matter. If they're the same concentration, what's gonna happen? They're gonna drop out of this expression because anything divided by itself is one, which means that the hydronium ion concentration then is equal to the Ka, or that the pH is equal to the pKa. So why the heck is that important? Well, recognize then, if you're trying to prepare a buffer from a you know, from a whole host of acids, you can just look at the Ka of the different acids from a reference chart and choose the acid that has a Ka that's near the hydronium ion concentration, or choose the acid whose pKa is close to the pH that you want. And then you can just adjust that ratio of acid to conjugate base to fine tune your pH. All right, and there's one last thing to remember when it comes to preparing your own buffer. Recognize that it's the relative number of moles, not molarity that's important because your buffer system is in the same solution and therefore your weak acid and conjugate base share the same solution volume. In other words, the volumes will essentially cancel out in these calculations. So focus on the moles. All right, that does it for this vid. Check out some of those guided practice problems to see how you can prepare your own buffer with a specific pH. Done.